Hello, welcome to my review show. I know that the Day of the Dead was 10 days ago, but this movie I'm going over with you is about Day of the Dead, a cultural holiday originated from Mexico. The movie we will cover is Coco. Now that Pixar wants to pick up a guitar and present us with the magic of Mexico, will this film sing an amazing tune to us? Or is the film just all bones and no muscle? Cue the music! The Story this is the kind of film that has less to do with the story itself and more with what people can find in the story. Despite his family's generations-old ban on music, young Miguel dreams of becoming an accomplished musician like his idol, Ernesto de la Cruz. Desperate to prove his talent, Miguel finds himself in the stunning and colorful Land of the Dead. After meeting a charming trickster named Hector, the two new friends embark on an extraordinary journey to unlock the real story behind Miguel's family history. In my opinion, this is one of the weaker films made by Pixar. Miguel was so desperate to achieve his dream of becoming a musician that he became selfish and turns his back on everything important in life. But when Ernesto's true nature is revealed, he finally learns his lesson. The Animation Just when you think you've seen all they could offer, and just when you think you've seen it done like this before, Pixar would always find a way to produce animation that is a real feast for the eyes. Dante is a Zolo dog a national Mexican breed that is known for its lack of hair and rough skin. Due to a genetic trait, Zolo dogs also regularly lose teeth, and as a result, their tongues often slip out of their mouths. The animators decided to incorporate this into Dante's design and have as much fun with it as they could. Dante's tongue was animated using the same technology used for Hank the Zeptopus in Finding Dory and the titular character from the Pixar short, Lou. Whenever a guitar is played, the animated character's fingers match the fingering of the actual chords. The design of the Campazuchitl Bridge incorporates the Aztec pyramids. The look of the Land of the Dead is inspired by the Mexican city of Guanajuato, which has colorful houses placed on the hillsides in such a way that they look almost stacked. The filmmakers and animators traveled to Mexico five times to research about the culture, people, food, traditions, etc., to help define the story and characters of Coco. Among their journeys, they visited Mexico City and Oaxaca. Director Lee Uncrich said of the experience, I'd seen it portrayed in folk art. It was something about the juxtaposition of skeletons with bright, festive colors that captured my imagination. It has led me down a winding path of discovery, and the more I learn about Dia de Muertos, the more it affects me deeply. A different opening was partially animated that focused solely on Ernesto's final performance, which was for Dia de los Muertos, but was cut due to it introducing Miguel later than the producers wanted. On December 5, 2017, it got enough votes to take the number 45 spot in International Movie Database's top 250, surpassing Wally -E from 2008 as the highest rated computer animated movie. The Characters When a movie is about the importance of family, then it is certain that it would be all about the characters and the feelings they would go throughout their journey. Miguel is a 12-year-old aspiring musician who struggles against his family's generations-old ban on music. Hector is a charming trickster in the Land of the Dead who is forced to enlist help from Miguel to visit the Land of the Living. 
He was a Mexican musician in life and became a residential spirit in the land of the dead in death. Mama Imelda is Miguel's great-great-grandmother, the matriarch of the Rivera family, and the founder of their successful shoemaking business. Ernesto de la Cruz is Miguel's idol and the most famous musician in the history of Mexico. The dog's name, Dante, is a reference to Dante Alighieri, the Italian poet and author of the Divine Comedy, originally called Commedia. The Divine Comedy describes Dante's journey through the realm of the dead. In Mexico, the Zoloitzuitli, the Mexican hairless dog depicted in the film, is the guide of the deceased through his or her way to the Mictlan, the underworld, the place where all the souls go after death. Aside from Mama Coco and the deceased relatives that Miguel meets, no one knows the names of the living relatives. Miguel calls his uncle Tioberto, but the others are simply addressed as Mama, Papa, and Abilita until Miguel sings to Mama Coco at the end, and when Abilita sniffles, Mama Coco turns to her and calls her by her name, which is Elena. The character of Ernesto de la Cruz is based on the Mexican icon Pedro Infante. In fact, the second last name of the Infante was Cruz. In addition, Ernesto's last name, de la Cruz, is also a reference to another Pixar character, Cruz Ramirez from Cars 3. In addition to that, a cartoon of Pedro Infante appears in the film and even interacts with de la Cruz. Ernesto is the Spanish variation of the name Ernest, which sounds and is spelled very similarly to the word Ernest, meaning truthful, genuine, or heartfelt. And his last name is Spanish for of the cross, meaning his name is literally heartfelt of the cross. This is a major case of dramatic irony considering his true nature is a liar, fraud, and murderer. In Mexican folklore, Coco refers to a ghost who comes from the land of the dead. The monster does not appear in this film, but its name is given to a character who is important to the deceased. Miguel's last name, Rivera, is a reference to film producer Jonas Rivera, who has worked with Pixar Animation Studios since 1994 and produced two of their films, Up and Inside Out. Since Ernesto de la Cruz had such a large impact on Miguel, he named the stray dog Dante after a horse in one of de la Cruz's movies. This movie can be seen and heard projected at de la Cruz's house party. Ernesto de la Cruz shares his name with a famous Argentinian musician, bandoneonist, and composer Ernesto Nativide de la Cruz who was well known for his tangos. Among the main cast, Gil Garcia Bernal is the only actor to voice his character in both the English and Spanish versions of the movie, even though most of the actors are Latino. John Ratzenberger's role as Juan Orton Dinizia is the shortest part he's ever played out of all of the Pixar films. His character is given only one word of dialogue, gracias. In Brazil, because of the title change from Coco de Viva, Miguel's great-grandmother also got a new name. Mama Coco became Mama Inez. The name of the heavy metal band playing in the talent show is Escupula, which translated into English means shoulder blade. Even though the movie is named after her, the character Coco is only on screen for less than a quarter of the film's runtime. Coco, in Spanish, is a hypochorism for socorro, an actual common name for women, originated from Virgin del Socorro, Virgin of Relief. The character, the general, fades away, possibly referring to the quote by General Douglas MacArthur, Old soldiers never die, they just fade away. In Spanish, Pepita is the diminutive form of Pipa, which is an alternate form for Josepha. Josepha is the female version of Jose or Joseph.
Let me close this review with a speech. The film was originally titled Dia de los Muertos for the Mexican Holiday. In Spanish, the holiday is properly called Dia de Muertos. During the film's production in 2015, the Walt Disney Company made a request to trademark the phrase Dia de los Muertos for various merchandising applications. This was met with significant criticism from many people in the United States, particularly the Mexican-American community, who derided the company for cultural appropriation and exploitation. A week later, Disney canceled these efforts and changed the film's title to Coco. Sometime later, Pixar Animation Studios hired Mexican-American cartoonist Lalo Alcaraz, playwright Octavio Solis, and former CEO of the Mexican Heritage Corporation, Marcella Davison Aviles, as technical consultants for the film and asked them to take voiceover roles in the film. Alvalrez is the creator of the comic strip La Cucaracha and his signature on the strip. A caricature of himself over the name Lalo can be seen as a graffito on a wall in the City of the Dead. I can now happily add Coco onto Pixar's Ofrenda so it could be remembered as much as the other classics and I'll even place it with my collection. I better go now. See you later.